everybody. So today I want to talk to you about the Americans with Disabilities Act website compliance. Now, this is a very important thing, and it's hard to think of an act that was originally passed in 1990 having a huge impact on what our website looks like now, but it is, in fact, something that we have to be aware of. So we talk about the applicable federal law here, and yes, we are talking federal law here. We're talking about the Rehabilitation Act of 1973, specifically Section 504. Maybe you've heard those numbers before. Um, that's where that comes from. Um, and, and that's just basically saying that as a public school, we have to be able to provide for anybody regardless of disability. Um, specifically, when we talk about websites, we're talking about vision impairment. The next one is the Americans with Disability Act of 1990 and the subsequent amendments that have been added to it. That also does play into uh, a factor here. Now, one of the things that's been happening around the country and around Michigan is many districts have been notified by the Federal Office of Civil Rights that their webpage is not in compliance with Section 504 and with Title II of the Americans with Disabilities Act. Talking about districts and, and organizations in the state that deal with education that have been hit by this, we can say the Michigan Department of Education was actually notified by the Federal Office of Civil Rights that their webpage was not in compliance. So this is not just us. This is not just anybody. We need to ensure that we are doing this and make sure that it is something that we are all aware of. So not having a, a website that's in compliance with these two um, laws does constitute a violation of the civil rights of individuals with disabilities. So that has been deemed by courts that this is something that we need to do. Keeping that in mind, Ed Leo, our webpage and website provider, does a lot of the ADA compliance for us from color schemes to heading text to the way that our text appears on our page. That's not something we have to worry about. The one thing that is very important for us to worry about is the alternative text section of our pictures. So if we put a picture on the website, we have to have a way for vision impaired individuals to know what's happening in that picture and to know that there's a picture there. And that's what we're kind of here to talk about today. I'm going to switch over to a screen so that you can see what's going on. Hey everybody, so as we kind of turn on this alternative text feature, again, it's a requirement according to the Americans with Disabilities Act, we need to have certain things in place for our website to be considered ADA compliant. One of the easiest, lowest hanging fruits that we have is what's known as alternative text for our pictures. Now, one important thing to recognize is that when we flip this switch, when that switch is flipped, any pictures without alternative text are going to disappear. They'll no longer be visible publicly on our website. Now, privately on your page, you'll be able to see all the pictures you want without alternative text. Just anybody that visits your website is not going to see them. So when you go to your web page, you can double check what you have on your actual pictures um, just to kind of see what is there. So as I look, I've got five pictures here. And if I click on that picture, you see that alt box, that alt box, when I click, tells me exactly what it says. Now, this is the location where the photo was taken. So I have some photos of my wife and I in various spots, and we have all of these different things, and it just says Spartan Stadium as the location. Your alternative text does not have to be a Hemingway novel. doesn't have to be overly wordy. It just has to be able to provide a contextual description of what that picture is so that anybody who is vision impaired can understand contextually what is happening in the photo that you've chosen to put on your website. Now, if I add a new photo to my page, right, and I just pick a random one off the computer, I upload this image, and what's going to happen is with the ADA compliance on, it's going to alert us before we hit save in order to ensure that we are actually doing this right. So you see how it now says missing alt text? If I hit save and go to my public page, no one is going to see that picture I just uploaded. Now to add my alt text, I just click on that picture. I hit alt. 
It gives up me a box and I can type in a nice description. Mets fall rally participants um, doing design thinking challenge, right? Not overly wordy, but really does provide that contextual understanding of what's happening in that happening in that picture. And when I hit save, that orange box goes away. And now if I hit save again up here in the corner, what's going to happen is that pay, that picture will be on my website now. All right. So that's what we need to do. As a reminder, we have pictures in different spots. So we need to make sure that we're paying attention to where our pictures are and making sure that we still have those there. One thing that Ed Leo does for us, Ed Leo does much of the um, ADA compliance pieces for us. The only thing that they don't really cover for us is that alternative text. So it's really important that we take that responsibility for all that alternative text and they do give us that power. So when you see that orange box, if you have an orange box, those pictures are not publicly viewable. When you don't have an orange box, those pictures are publicly viewable. Yep. So now that we've gone through how to add alt text, what I wanna do is kind of give you some tips for keeping that alt text on our site. So think of the audience and message of the picture, right? What are we, why did we choose this picture? The saying is, you know, a picture says a thousand words. Well, why did we choose this picture to say those words? Right, that's what we have to consider. And we'll go through what this kind of looks like. We need to keep it short and simple. You don't have to write an paragraph about what's going on in this picture. Think of it almost like a tweet, right? We are limited in characters here. We wanna keep it short, we wanna keep it simple. We wanna make sure that it is concise and clear for those folks that may not be able to see it. And we wanna avoid using items like image of or photo of. Because there's an image text already there, an image tag already there built into the code, it implies that this is an image or a photo. We definitely don't need to put that in that piece. We don't have to say image of students, right? And that would be a poor one anyways. Um, so we do have to kind of think about that. So some samples, I put some samples together for us to look at. Here is a group, right? A poor example would be people at concert. It tells me nothing about the folks there and that, you know, I don't even know if they're having a good time if I see people at concert. They could be bored out of their mind, whatever it might be. But a good example would be diverse crowd enjoying music at a concert, right? That's a nice, clear example. It tells me that there is a group of different people in there. Um, you know, I could almost put mostly men enjoying because as I look at that picture now, I say mostly a, a diverse group of mostly men um, enjoying music at a concert. That's a good example. Here's another one. This one may be more, ac uh, more, more applicable in our environment, right? Poor example would be teacher teaching, right? That doesn't tell us anything else about what's in this picture. But if we do a good example, teaching teacher leading direct instruction to an intensive, um, to intensive diverse learners, that tells us a tremendous amount of what's happening in this picture. And it's very clear for me to imagine what that might look like. Finally, the last one, a poor example would say hockey players. A good example would be a referee preparing for a center ice face-off between teams of women's ice hockey players. That kind of covers it. So those are just some tips to kind of go through and do that now that we've taken a look and seen kind of how all of this works. So I want to thank you for watching. Thank you for tuning in. I hope you have a wonderful day. And as always, if you have questions about this, feel free to reach out and ask for my help. Have a wonderful, wonderful day. Thanks for watching.